Hey guys, it's Sam and welcome back to another critique video. This piece was sent by the artist Furiosity. Their focuses were fighting their fears, putting in backgrounds, making things dynamic and interesting. Their goals were to tell a story of these two characters meeting, kind of a threatening relationship between the two, and just experiment. First of all, props for experimenting and facing some of your fears. That's not always easy and can especially be discouraging when you're less skilled at something and the results aren't what you envisioned. But hey, you can't learn without trying, right? So I have to comment on the composition because I love it so much. You've got a great balance here with the large character on one side and the other character taking up quite a bit of space themselves being closer to the viewer. You've also got a really nice non-border quote unquote um, with these rocks and the water kind of keeping the viewer's eyes in the middle, which is perfect because that's where you want them to be. So you've definitely built an interesting scene that has me wanting to know more. Proportions wise, I'm a bit iffy on the figure. From what it looks like, it's almost worm's eye view, like we're below looking upward. Um, I'm getting this vibe mostly from the torso and the leg positions. If that's the case, I'd probably shrink the head just a little bit, as well as the hands. I'm not super great at perspective though, so I'd look at photo references or have a friend help you out if you can. So you asked how to put light and shading on a character in a relatively dark environment, and you kind of can't. I mean, realistically speaking, a dark environment is dark because there's no light. so. You're going to need to have some sort of light source, whether it be a lamp, a flashlight, city lights, the moon, um, or you can kind of just make up a light source like it's coming from the camera, like behind the camera where you can't see it. Alternatively, you could have the entire scene just be overall lighter. But if you were to take a drive out of the city, get into some more secluded country areas, it gets really dark. And even uh, fire, torches, flashlights, they do very little. I used to live in Florida and drive back and forth from my parents and there was this back road I'd take and it didn't have any street lights and it was pitch black. <laughs> so like I said, you can try and work around it. I'm not too well versed in night or dark scenes myself. These are just two recent examples that I have. So you can go out for an adventure yourself in real life or you can try out reference photos and see what other artists are doing. For what you have, I think you did a good job. I didn't find myself really questioning it when I first saw it. There are many paintings and artworks that I've seen that have like an extra or faux light source coming from behind the camera, and I think that's okay. That's kind of what you have going on like over here. My main issue with it is the clarity, but that's less from the darkness and more from textures, and I'll touch on that in a bit. But I'll have a link in the description to a bunch of artworks by artists way more pro than I am that you might find helpful or inspiring. So you also mentioned issues with making something distinguished, uh, specifically your monster in the background that's made of this black goo. And I think the main thing throwing me off is the texture. Textures can make for really cool effects or act as great assets for your piece, but sometimes you can kind of overdo it. And I feel like that's the case here. It's hard to see the details and everything looks kind of blurry, I'm rather lost and it's just kind of confusing. <laughs> the longer I stare at it, the more I can try and figure things out, but that's probably not the impression you were going for. Since the eyes glow, you can kind of use that to your advantage, and if it's goo, it might shine a bit brighter or reflect more. Um, it might help to find real life objects that resemble what the character is made of. Um, maybe some sort of glossy ceramic or jello, various jellies, honey, oils. You can try shining a flashlight on them at various angles and distances and see how that goes. What might help is to imagine the scene first in bright daylight. That might give you some ideas of how to do the details and layout of things more easily since working with dark colors can be difficult. Since you're doing it digitally, it's an easy thing to do, just utilize layer effects, opacity, layer masks, etc. That might make things more clear from the start so when you adjust it and make it darker, things could stand out in a more obvious way. So you also asked how to make your water look a bit more like water. 
I feel a tad bad that I know very little for the things that you've been asking, but if I were approaching this myself, this is kind of what I would do. You can look up images of splashing water or even splash some water yourself. Uh, observe the shapes, how they clump together, break apart, try adding various light sources. Here's one that I feel might help you a lot too, just since you mentioned it's blue water. I think you've got some nice highlights, but from what I've seen while looking more into it, uh, water tends to have some really dark spots too, especially where it pools together and is thicker. Water likes catching light, it's really reflective, and I think you could push that more with this piece too. I think what's throwing me off a bit uh, with the water in this piece is the texture as well. The speckled greediness doesn't really give me a water feel, and I know that water can be dirty and look like that and have stuff in it. Um, there's just something about how it's done here that's kind of throwing me off. Um, perhaps it'd be worth playing around with the opacity of the texture, different textures, or maybe no textures. All in all, I think this is a nice piece. I definitely feel the story you described, these two characters encountering each other and the uncomfortable vibe because of it. I hope you keep playing around and experimenting. If you'd like to see more from Curiosity, I have their YouTube channel in the description, and if you'd like to see more critique videos, I have an entire playlist of them linked down below. And a special shout out to all my supporters over on my Patreon page if you'd like to see more artwork, tutorials, and other bonus content, as well as helping me out in return, consider becoming a patron. Link for more information is in the description. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more art-related videos. Thanks so much for watching! Bye!